Hey guys, uh, welcome to my 3D modeling tutorial for uh, 3D Studio Max. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how to build an M4A1 assault rifle. And uh, I'm going to move at a pretty slow pace to uh, kind of help the newcomers to uh, 3DS Max get used to the interface as well as, you know, working with 3D space. And um, hopefully you guys will pick up a few neat tricks and uh, techniques in this tutorial to uh, help you guys along with uh, future projects. Um, also if you're following this tutorial and you're using a different software package like Maya you shouldn't worry because these techniques and such are all applicable across different 3D software packages so whatever your program is that you should still be able to pick up the, uh, the concepts from what I'm trying to show. Um, so without boring you guys to death, I'm going to try to explain everything as well as I can, but I don't want to slow us down too much as we go. So let's just jump right into this and insert an, a reference image um, by uh, selecting the front viewport here, and you'll see it's selected with the, uh, the yellow brackets around it. Um, also, quick navigation intro. If you're trying to rotate around your objects in 3ds max you just hold alt and press in the uh, mouse wheel and hold it um, and you can rotate around freely also you can do that by selecting this view cube up here um, some 3ds max versions do not have the view cube active by default and some of them even don't have it at all depending on how old the version is that you're using um, also, you can pan around the, uh, the viewport by holding in the mouse wheel itself and just moving the mouse. And you can zoom in and out by just using the mouse wheel. So what I'm going to do is resetting, reset the view by pressing Z. And that's normally the function to zoom all extents. So if I had an object in my scene right now, it would just zoom out far enough to where I see my object and everything else that I've created in the scene. Um, so without um, wasting any more time now um, for the second time uh, I'm going to uh, show you how to insert a plane and how to apply a material with a reference image on that plane um, so what we're gonna do is get rid of this grid here just so we can easier see and I did that just by pressing G in the viewport that's actively selected and you can press G to bring it back again um, Next, what you want to do is come over here to the uh, Create panel under Geometry and click on the plane down here. This is under Standard Primitives if you don't have the same thing open. Um, we'll click on the plane and then left click, hold, and drag. And we're just going to bring it out far enough to kind of cover most of the viewport, but it's not a big deal how big the box is at the moment. Um, you'll see that I come. I came up with all this extra geometry right here and I don't really want that. Um, I'm also going to activate the wireframe in my perspective view so you can see it there. Um, press F4 if you're in the active perspective view and that will bring up the wireframe. Um, I'm also going to get rid of these selection brackets that you'll see on the outside just because they get on my nerves. Um, I'm going to get rid of the grid as well. Actually. I'm going to keep the grid in place for a moment and just show you how to set this world, uh, this object to world origin. I'm going to do that by these coordinates down here are always indicating where your selected object is in relation to the world space. So if you just right click on the uh, little dial bars down here, just right click on those and it'll just reset everything to zero. So your object is now at origin in world space. So what we're going to do is move over here to the Modify panel on the uh, top right here. And now we'll see with our object selected, the plane, we have our, our parameters for the created object right down here. Um, what I'm going to do is just set these length and width segments to, uh, to the lowest possible, um, which is 1. So I did that just by right clicking, or you can type it in there, or you can just keep clicking on the arrows to, uh, to get to the amount that you need. Um, 
And the reason I did that was because we really don't need that much geometry in the way, and I also don't like geometry from a background object to get in the way and conflict with the geometry I'm actually working with in front of that. So next step would be to apply an image um, to our object. So we're going to open up the material editor, which is opened with this button up here with the uh, checker pattern sphere on it. So we can click on that, or you can just simply press M on your keyboard, and uh, it'll bring up the same dialog box. And this right here is your um, default material editor. Um, what we want to do is apply this material, this blank material that's up here already selected, onto our object. And we can either do that by dragging and dropping it onto the object, or we can just press this button right here that says assign material to... Uh, to the selection, so any selected object will have that applied to it. Um, also, I want to move to the diffuse channel down here, and you'll notice these two blank buttons here um, for diffuse and specular. You want to move to the one right next to, spec and to diffuse and uh, click on that, and then open up your bitmap. And uh, at this point, you should already have a uh, reference image to work from. Um, I'm going to be working from a side view since that is the most important view to work from on a rifle. Um, I can normally get most of my uh, dimensions out of that image alone. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up the image I selected to work from. And uh, once we have that, now this, is, um, this image is applied to our original material which should update in our viewport down here. But normally, you would have to activate the uh, shaded material in viewport, which is just this little checker pattern plane box right here. We're going to click on that, and uh, there we go. We have our image in the viewport. Next thing we want to do is, you'll notice that this thing is kind of squashed. And uh, I really want to keep the proportions in this project kind of as cr proper and correct as I can and uh, what we got to do to fix that is fix the actual plane dimensions to match the the image so what we're gonna do is go up to the modifier list our that's assuming our uh, object is still selected and go up to the modifier list here scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see that there's close to the bottom you'll see a UVW map modifier we're gonna click on the map modifier and uh, towards the bottom of that you'll see the bitmap fit option what we want to do is go to the bitmap fit and then select the exact same image that we just used to apply to our material and we open that up now what you see is the image stretched beyond its the planes um, borders so what we need to do is fix the uh, the plane dimensions to match to the original image dimensions and the original image dimensions are now copied in here since the bitmap has been fit to that so what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste that by control C on the width section there we're gonna go back to the uh, modifier stack to the plane level and then select the width under parameters here and just paste that in with control V or right click and paste um, and there we go now we have our background image um, in place in the scene. We no longer need this modifier working here, so we can just go ahead and delete that. Um, and we're ready to go. Um, there's another easy way to do this as well. Also, if you wish to see your image in the front view, which is what we're going to be working from, you want to press F3 to get rid of the wireframe setting and just work off of the image itself. We do still want to see edged faces, so once you pressed F3 and you can see the texture, you want to press F4 to make the wireframe visible. And it's not for this box, but it's for our actual object that we're going to build and block out later that we want to be able to see the wireframe for. Um, also, I'm going to deselect the uh, realistic setting and just go to regular shaded just to keep um, cast shadows and ambient occlusion out of our way for the moment. Um, so first I'm going to um, just right click on uh, 
this right here. If you right click in the scene while your object is selected, just roll right up on here and uh, just hide the selection really quick. Just to show you that there's an easier way to do this, but also it has its own drawbacks as well as the method that we just used. Um, and I'll explain that later on as we start building because it'll become more apparent. Um, if you press Alt B in your active viewport, it'll bring up a viewport background dialog box. Um, now what we have is this dialog box that wants you to direct the file path to the image that you wanted to use for your your reference. So I'm just going to find that on my computer really quick and insert that. And now you'll see that my file path is visible here. And uh, I'm going to click OK, and you'll notice that I have the exact same problem once again with the stretching. Um, and that's because we forgot to check two little boxes. Um, if you press Alt and B one more time, you'll get the viewport background dialog again. And uh, we're going to click on Match Bitmap down here. So what we want to do is match the original image dimensions so that it's not stretched anymore. And then we also want to lock the zoom and pan function which means that when we pan, our image stays in the exact same world space where it should be because our object isn't going to move when we pan the screen and neither should our image behind it. Um, now you'll notice that this is only viewable in the uh, active viewport and that's because we're only working from the front on this front image. Um, you're not rotating act around an actual object, so this will never actually get in your way when you work in 3D space. Um, but also you'll see that it's a little more pixelated, a little more lower res, but that shouldn't really be a problem because we're really just looking for rough shapes that we can work off of. Um, this is normally my more preferred method for uh, using reference images. But either way works, and there's really no wrong way of doing this. So what we're going to do now is just save our file. And uh, I've already created a save file. And I'm just going to save right over it. This is just my save file right now, M4A101. And I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And I will see you back for the next tutorial.